Let's look at equations for horizontal and vertical lines. Let's take a look at how we would graph the line y equals 3. Our first step would be to create a function table. And so for any given value of x, say we had x equals 0, you'll notice that there's no x variable here for equation of y equals 3. So there's no place to substitute the value of 0 in. So it just says y equals 3. Okay, fine, y equals 3. When x is 1, we look here again. Oh, it says y equals 3. Fine, we'll put y equals 3. When x is 2, y is also equal to 3. So I have these points, and I'll list my ordered pairs as I would do when I'm graphing functions. I list my ordered pairs 0, 3, 1, 3, 2, 3. Next, I go ahead and plot them, and I'll do so. And then finally, I would connect it to make that line of y equals 3. I just moved and shrunk my work a little so I would have some more room to work. For that first point, 0, 3. For that next point, it says 1, 3. And for that final point, it says 2. When x is 2, y is 3. Then all I need to do is to draw that line through those points. To show that line, y equals 3. And as you'll see, it'll be a horizontal line. And as you see there, I've drawn that horizontal line, y equals 3. Even when x would be negative 3, y would still also equal 3. Now notice again, that is a horizontal line. So y equals any number, say negative 2, then we would have that line of y equals negative 2, a horizontal line. Let's see how we would graph a vertical line. Let's go ahead and graph that equation, x equals 2. Again, we'll make a function table. This time we know that x equals 2. What we don't know are the values of y. And in fact, we can choose any values of y we want, like 0. When y is 1, x is still 2. When y is 2, x is still 2. Next, we would list those ordered pairs. 2, 0, 2, 1, 2. 2. After we've made our function table and listed our ordered pairs, we go ahead and plot those points on our graph. We have 2, 0. We have the point 2, 1. And we also have the point 2, 2. So our graph is going to be this vertical line, x equals 2, that goes through those three points. As you see, I've drawn that vertical line through those points, and you'll make sh sure to extend that in either direction. The other thing I did not do with the other line that I really should be doing with each of these lines, I don't recall whether I did that or not, is I really should be labeling those lines. So as you see, I've labeled that vertical line x equals 2. So now you've seen both a vertical line and a horizontal line. You'll notice again, vertical line x equals some value. So for instance, x equals 2. Or for this vertical line, this would be x equals negative 4. x equals negative 4. For any value of y, say 4, x would still be negative 4. Or negative 2, x would still be negative 4. Vertical lines. x equals that number. Okay, it's time for you to try. I would like you to go ahead and graph both of these lines here. Remember to go ahead and set up a function table. Set up that function table, and I'm even going to choose those values of y for you for that first function table. And then remember, all those values of x are going to be negative 2. Remember to list your ordered pairs, graph them, and to connect and label that line on that sheet of graph paper you should end up with both horizontal and vertical lines. Please go ahead and hit pause. Okay, returning from that pause, again, any of those values should have been negative 2. So x comes first, so it's negative 2, 0, negative 2, 1, 
and negative 2, 2 that you should have plotted for that first one of x equals negative 2. For y equals 3, we would have done something very similar. Again, write your equation right above your function table. This time we got to choose values of x, and you might have chosen different values of x than I did. I have the point 0, 3, 1, 3, 2, 3. Your points may vary. However, all of your y-coordinates for each of the points that you um, figured out for that function table should be 3. Our next thing to do after all of this is to go ahead and graph these on um, a piece of graph paper. And hopefully you did that and ended up with vertical and horizontal lines. Let me try. Okay, I made a little bit more room there. We'll start with uh, x equals negative 2, so I have negative 2, 0. And then I have negative 2, 1, and I also have negative 2, 2, where those x-coordinates come first. Go ahead and draw a line through those points, and remember to label my line as well. Extended that line in either direction, and as I said before, I'm going to label that line. It is a vertical line, that is x equals negative 2. For our other line, y equals 3, it's going to be a horizontal line, and I'll show that to you. Plotting the points first, I have 0, 3. Next, I have 1, 3. And finally, I have 2 and 3. Drawing my line back on through those points as follows. And as you see, I have that horizontal line, as I said before of y equals 3. And that's what your graph should look like. Your points, again, might have varied. For y equals negative 3, is that a vertical or a horizontal line? What you could do, even without a sheet of graph paper, is you could make yourself a coordinate grid and really think, hey, y equals negative 3. That means x can equal anything you want. So y equals negative 3 means that this here would be y equals negative 3, and that would be a horizontal line. That would be a horizontal line. So for instance, we would have 1, negative 3. We would have negative 5, negative 3 as some of those points that are on that line x equals 2, again, is a vertical line. That is a vertical line where y can equal any value. So that's all you need to know about graphing horizontal and vertical lines.